thank you very much for joining us here. We are with Nutrition Nut author and founder of Primal Cure, Steve Bennett. Hello. And hello, thank you for joining us. Thank you at You're home welcome. as well. And Any chance to be in a kitchen with Dan works for me. I know, <laughs> in the Primal Kitchen. Very, very, very exciting. And also, carb dodging doctor, Dan Mags. Now, we're mostly used to ordinarily seeing our doctors sat behind a desk, telling us, you know, what to do health-wise and perhaps even giving us nutrition advice. And we thought, right, Put your money where your mouth is, get in the kitchen and really show us some practical ways in which we can help ourselves, which is why Dr. Dan was more than happy to come and do so. <laughs> so Dan, thank you. Can you tell us what you're doing today and why carb dodging is part of your lifestyle? Yep. Yeah. so I've got to admit that I've kind of already made a bit of a mistake because today I was supposed to be doing, it's, it's a take on paella. I'm not going to say it's, it's, paella, it's a low carb paella because like that's quite a cultural dish, and mm -hmm. I think people have upset people before by saying no, this is my going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's not. It's paella inspired. It's not a paella by any stretch of the imagination. But it's supposed to be um, cauliflower, uh, chorizo, and king prawns. Uh, but I forgot chorizo. Oh look, look! Don't take it yourself. I did the shopping. I forgot the chorizo <laughs> because I'm a bit that way. Should so. let me do it. Anyway, <laughs> you went, let's carry on with the show because so it's we've got some chicken. We're going to add some chicken in instead, okay. and I'm going to add a bit of a uh, bit of extra smoked paprika because that's what really gives Ooh. chorizo its flavour anyway. So hopefully, we're going to try and riff our way around that little issue. So, and this one is not in uh, the Primal Gourmet book, but kind of follows all the principles in the Gourmet book because. Whenever we try and encourage you to cook food, we want you to start thinking, A, about the flavors, but more importantly, about the nutrition. We want to start really, the, right, we're gonna cook a meal for our loved ones, our family, our siblings, our parents. We wanna look after everybody. So let's make sure it tastes great because they've got to enjoy the experience, but let's make sure that everything that goes into the pan has a reason, not just for the flavor, but for the benefit and the health benefit. Yeah. And that's what you and I are pretty much about. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So it's all about getting great nutrients in there. There's nothing really in here that is there just for the sake of giving us energy without nutrition, which is, is what I believe a lot of carbs are. They're just, they're there to give you energy, but not, they don't really have a huge amount of nutritional value. So everything in here, great from a nutrition perspective. Yeah, and you'll have me going through the Primal uh, Gourmet <coughs> Recipe Book. Uh, because look, if you go towards the beginning, uh, you'll be able to see different ingredients and what benefits they actually have. And actually, it, it also within the book, you'll see of many different conditions and actually what foods that are, would be good for that particular condition. So it's, we're not just talking about, you know, your average recipe book. I mean, there's some great ones out there, I'm not saying that, but this isn't just about food, it's about nutrition and how it can link to your health. So I'll be sort of having a look through, flicking through the book. I've also got my laptop on screen as well, uh, just to pick up any of the ingredients and actually sort of tell you some of the benefits yeah. that, that come with the food that you're cooking today. Absolutely, you touched on a good point there, Pop. So and the index at the back, mm -hmm. when I was working out how do I index the book, I thought, let's index it totally different. Let's take all of the 100 recipes and then let's look at what people are trying to get health benefits from. So it mm -hmm. might be better eyesight, it might be IBS problems, it might be worried about cancer, it might mm -hmm. be worried about Alzheimer's. So I did the health topics first and then said, well, if you're worried about your eyesight, go to this page, this page, this page, this page, because these are the menus, the recipes, that have got ingredients that we associate with good eyesight. Fabulous. So we yeah. turn it on. So the front tells you all the things uh -huh. that are good and should be in a primal diet. It also tells you what you can use, but in moderation. Mm -hmm. It also tells you if you're trying to live healthily, especially if you're trying to get your weight down, avoid diabetes, avoid obesity, avoid cancer. A big red area of do not put this mm -hmm. in your cooking, mm -hmm. but it focuses on the good stuff. Yeah. Here's all the hundred. 20, 150 different ingredients that are fantastic. Here's a few in moderation, and there's a half a dozen or so you really need to avoid in all your cooking. Fantastic, and I mean diabetes and obesity is, is two areas that you really specialize in when it comes to low carb, isn't it? So can you yeah. tell us a bit more about that? Actually? Yeah, I think that's really yeah. the, that's the, the number one focus and the, the best evidence for a low carb diet really comes in you know, in obesity and uh, in, within type 2 diabetes. And that's all due to the fact that it's the underlying process going on in the body is insulin resistance, which we're not born with. Some of us have a genetic tendency towards it, but really once you start becoming resistant to the effects of insulin, 
any carbohydrate is going to make your body work a lot, mm -hmm. lot harder. And, and many people who are obese are insulin resistant and pretty much everybody with type 2 diabetes, give or take a few exceptions, is insulin resistant as well. So uh, it's a really, really important and that's where, you know, I'm the biggest advocate of a low carb diet. Fabulous. Well, I, I'm, I'm hungry. Get Let's going. get cooking. Get <laughs> what are you You're, making? You see, you need to, this is the first time <laughs> I've done any cooking on camera. So there's this slight issue of actually talking and doing things at the same time. So you, you this is why so we can talk amongst ourselves. <laughs> if not, we'll have, we'll have, we'll have a Pops chat. and I'll have a little conversation. <laughs> so olive oil. Got any facts about olive oil? Let's have a little look, shall we? Okay, and I'm just going to put some... Healthy fats, we know that. Some of the great shitty. things about olive oil is it's one of the most regular... You know, like champagne mm -hmm. uh, for, for you know, fizzy wine is highly regulated. Rules about what you can call and can't call champagne. To the exact sort of same standard, it's the same with olive oil. There are really big rules about claiming whether it's extra virgin, whether it's virgin and so on. So uh, olive oils are great. Mm -hmm from nearly all supermarkets because it's so heavily regulated. I'm going to show you how to chop a cauliflower really quick. You told me that oh, when we were on holiday this year. did, so yeah. So, to... let's get rid. Let's just do half the cauliflower. I'll get that off to the side at the moment, OK? So, Dan wanna... showed me this when he saw me messing around. <laughs> so, down there. Yeah. OK? And you've got your cauliflower fluet wow. already done. Very quick. And then just the other side. I had a right mess of the kitchen, but... Don't worry, I'll tidy up. Uh, can you do that <laughs> with the other half? Because I, I think you went too fast and we didn't get that. Let's just put those in the slender blender. Go on then. I'll put those in there for the moment, OK? Right, I want to see you do that again, because yep. I don't think we all caught that. No. You're just too quick with your hands, Doc. OK. So, half a cauliflower. Slope, slope. slope half slope, a cauliflower. Slope, slope. So half a cauliflower down right. the middle. Let me angle it towards the right. Ooh, there we go. So, an, an angle off that way, Bang. okay, and that is, wow. your florets all break out nice and easily, and just the last two bits off there, core separate, do with it what you want to do. Full of nutrition and, uh, core, by the way. happy days. Yeah, I usually, I do often chop the core up and use it as part of the recipe. Yep. Great source of fibre, isn't it, cauliflower as well, yep. and B vitamins, and oh, this is... Straight, straight in raw. Do you know what? Broccoli, cauliflower are exactly the same. And I actually really like it very crunchy when it's raw. I love it cooked as well. But mm. I'll just, I'll, I'll have it either way. Oh. No. The, more, the more you come off the carbs, uh -huh. the more flavour you taste. It's like smokers. When they stop smoking, they get the taste buds back. Same with the carbs. The carbs kill our taste buds. Once you get off carbs, everything tastes so much nicer. Uh -huh. And the root, although you don't really cook with that often, but normally flavoursome and dead healthy. I think you don't naturally appreciate the sweetness that we that is around mm. us every day when you're kind of constantly being exposed to like really super sweet stuff. Mm. And actually, like coming off the sweets and the sugars, and even on, on the, you know, a lot of people will say that there's sweeteners and stuff that you can replace if you really want to. I really encourage people to take come off those as well and really yeah. appreciate the natural sweetness, even in cauliflower and stuff as well. So. Yeah, right, cauliflower oh. rice. So I'm going to just use half the cauliflower for this recipe. Really important not to overload the blender, kind of chopping it up fairly small. And then... Can we top on for you? Just to clarify as well, this, this only comes with... So you've got the, the red slender blender, but if you want to get it with the food processor, uh, then you can order the, uh, the Pro in cauliflower. Slender Blender yeah. Pro. Slender Blender Pro. Can yeah. we get a close-up on the blender, please? <laughs> He's getting there with that camera. <laughs> so He's whilst we're doing that, that just camera. should I read you this out of the book quickly? It's a cauliflower. Yeah, please do. It's wealth of phytonutrients and anti-inflammatory compounds, fight off heart disease, ward off cancer, and help us to lose weight. It is also rich in carotenoids, which help maintain healthy eyesight. So that's in your book as well, if you've got the uh, Primal Gourmet recipe book available online. By the online. way, most people think, well, rice must be fine for us to eat. It can't be bad for our health. Mm -hmm. If you are overweight and trying to lose weight, believe it or not, one small bowl of rice has more sugar in it when it gets converted in the body than a can of Coke, a cola, or a can of other fizzy pops. So while you might think rice is innocent, if you're trying to lose weight or if, you, if you're diabetic, uh, the rice has to go, I'm afraid. Mm. But cauliflower rice, totally different mm. story. Yeah. So I, with the cauliflower rice, I think the import, I love to make it in a blender. It's so much a 
quicker way than grating it or chopping it. So small pulses. Just a few seconds at a time. It's done a really good job. Gosh, that's Amazing. so quick, that's isn't it? It's done a really great job that has actually. Um, so yeah, you'll never get it perfect. It's never going to be exactly the same consistency as rice, but you can see it's pretty nice. Yep. So yeah, so easy How to do make. How you normally cook yours? Do you fry it? Fry it. In the it oven fry or? it. But sometimes I do. Sometimes use it on a tray in the oven. Yep. Sometimes with a bit of ghee in there. Yep. Shove that in there. That's sometimes to cook it. I actually really like. I don't always chop it up. I just chop it into florets yep. and actually. I like to roast cauliflower as well. Yeah. Bring some of the natural sweetness out. Just olive oil, bit of salt and pepper. Yeah. Um, in in the pan and just great side dish. We, really. uh, we so. went to David Unwin's house in Southport the other day. His wife cooked us a lovely lunch. It was just duck. Mm -hmm. It was some green beans and it was cauliflower. Just, just to clarify yeah. for, for anyone at home, David Unwin. Who, who's David Unwin? So David Unwin yeah. is possibly the number one doctor in the UK when it comes to diabetes. He represents and advises cross-party uh, in the government and he won NHS um, uh, NHS Innovator of the Year in wow. 2016 so really top top GP Very credible, but yeah. cauliflower is in his, his, in his sort of in his, 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 his fridge it's in his recipes and it's something that I know Dan and I both love cooking with. Yeah. Just adding a bit of garlic and half a red onion in there at the moment as well get that on the go. Lovely. It smells amazing. When you it cook red onions, amazing. there's a temptation to over peel the outer layers. Mm. The most important thing, once you peel, peel the skin off a little bit more slowly because the outer layers are where most of the antioxidants are. Mm -hmm. And as you come to the centre of the onion, you, let, you lose less, well, you get less and less mm. of the benefits. So onions, those outer layers, the antioxidants are all there to ward off all the nasty. So all the health right. benefits are in that last two or three layers. Yeah, so we'll just turn the, uh, the heat down a little bit at the moment just so the onion and stuff doesn't doesn't burn because uh, that's quite easy to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. It doesn't taste great really when it's uh, when it's all burnt. Also you want to retain as many of the natural compounds that it offers you know lots of anti-inflammatory properties in there, antioxidant properties, great for the body, great for the skin as well you know working really from the inside out. Do you know what I have to say I feel like um, you know on Countdown <laughs> when you've got somebody checking, checking the words, let me just check that for you. Yes, that, that can be used. <laughs> Thank you. That's very kind of you. We love onions, Dan. I feel like that on the end with my laptop here. <laughs> yeah, so onions kind of fall into that medium zone for me in terms of carbohydrate content. They're not like super low in carbs like your, um, uh, like your cauliflower is, which is, you know, when you are cooking onions and if you if you cook them for a long time, they can become really caramelised and sweet. That's the natural sugars in there. So. I always say to people if they're being really strict on a low carb diet, you need to moderate the amount of onion yep. they use. So this has just got half mm -hmm. a, uh, an onion in this recipe. Uh, just this is a you know this is a ketogenic recipe. Mm -hmm. This is low enough carbs to keep you in a state of ketosis. It's, yep. it's uh, the only reason I left that in in the book in the first part, the green section, is I thought long and hard about do I put in moderation? But the reality is, when we're cooking onions in recipes. We tend to do yeah, moderation exactly, anyway. Exactly, and we're so. not using huge volumes of the stuff yep. anyway. So, yeah, I mean, I'd say onions is a low carb, but in the, in the majority of cases, unless you're doing a, a huge yep. onion recipe, it's, yep. it's going to be absolutely fine with it. So... Can I, can I just ask you, ketosis you mentioned there. What, what, can you explain what ketosis is? Yeah, just well? after I've put these Please, in. Please, yeah, absolutely. So a bit, of, cori in there? bit of coriander <laughs> and a bit of... What's that stuff? That is uh, paprika, smoked Ooh. paprika. That's to give the flavour of the... Um, the chorizo. Can you smell that, guys? Sure yeah. can. And it wasn't until What's a couple of weeks ago we were away on holiday and uh, our other friend Rob was there. I'd always said, oh, coriander's got to be fresh, got to be fresh. But actually, in dishes like this, it's actually more flavoursome, yeah, powdered it? up and, or seeded. So, or... yes, yeah, so, so it's the seeds of the coriander, mm -hmm. in this case, that we're using, and, um, and that ground up. And it, it's just a, a slightly different flavour. We've got some um, fresh coriander. In fact, you can pick a little bit of that just for the garnish at the end. Oh, thank um, you. That's really so, um, <laughs> if there's any there. Um, so yeah. You just... said pick, not eat, Steve. Oh, just... pick, not eat, right, right. <laughs> Gosh, so, yeah. smelling amazing. You can, you can really amazing. smell the spices so coming through. So now through. we're going to add in. Collie rice. Yeah. Can I just also reference how, how quickly that was done and how 
I just want to seemingly quiet for a food processor. That, I mean, that blitzed that very quickly and very efficiently. It's actually doing a really yeah. nice. I think it's because the blade, the like, two sets of blades. Yes, yeah. yeah. it's um, for double blades. It's probably better than the one I've got at home, actually, in terms well, of. Well, we um, can do you a bit of a deal, Doctor. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so uh, so yeah, that, there you go. And so the cauliflower like. rice is taking on the colour mm -hmm. already of the uh, the smoked paprika, and that's in there. And guys, it really does smell. Yeah, if I do say so myself, <laughs> pretty awesome. So uh, you can so, yeah. say, you can say. Yep. And obviously, you've got so many different different elements, components in there that offer so much goodness. I mean, the paprika, even what you've, you know, the seasoning and so on. That's got loads of antioxidants in there. Great for the Herbs body. Great and for spices the spices. Yeah. Bring real food to life. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the magic that goes on top of food. And when people think that you know you've got to have carbohydrates mm -hmm. for, 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 to make flavours and food, it's just nonsense. What you need yeah. is real food. Like uh -huh. all we've got here is cauliflower, some chicken, some onions, and then we've just added some herbs and spices. And not only are they flavour some, they bring so. Well, oh, just think about Chinese herbal medicine. For centuries and centuries, have been used to cure so many diseases, mm -hmm. and you're getting it here to add the flavour and a lot of goodness. I mean, it really dispels the myth that healthy eating can be boring. You know, I, I mean, it's just not true. It's just not true. No, it really totally isn't. Opposite. It really isn't. And I think so often what we thought about as healthy eating is, you know, like really stingy salads and things like mm -hmm. that. But that's just not what I believe healthy eating is to be. You should always be full and satisfied after your food. If, especially if you're trying to lose weight, you're never going to do it if you can't stick to it. Yeah. Uh, and that was, that was a game changer for me, being able to eat until you're full feeling physically satisfied because you've got nutrition from your food, not mm -hmm. physically satisfied because yeah. of the bulk of the food. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's a real big difference. And you're talking to a GP and a nutrition freak that were both technically obese mm -hmm. only three or four years ago. Yeah. And the biggest change, Dan does a lot more exercise than I do, but his biggest change, I think we'll both agree, mm -hmm. comes from the food first. Yeah. yeah. So nutrition, what, yeah. what, what was actually going into your body? Exactly. I mean, you were very act, act, I mean, you still are, but, yeah. you know, trek to the North Pole. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Dan, so what, what have we got there? What's going in next? Tell prawns. us what, what's going on. Prawns, lovely. Prawns. So, yeah, <laughs> already Fabulous. going in, and uh, we're really getting to the end of this dish now. Just being careful not to burn anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're going to get those prawns in. They're really, they're really pre-cooked, so they really just need to heat through. That's like just from a safety point of view, really. Yeah. So if your um, prawns are pink in the supermarket, they've already been cooked. So you leave those to the last minute when you throw them in the dish. If they're grey and uncooked, you put them in just a little bit earlier. Right, mm. right. And in the primal gourmet recipe book here, uh, you've got a uh, mention about shellfish. Uh, so Steve, who's written the book here, has mentioned prawns, oysters, mussels, clams and shrimps have numerous health benefits. Um, in particular, they're a rich source of selenium and vitamin B12. What's the benefit of B12? So B12, yep. uh, one of the, the B vitamins, the body can't retain it. We need uh -huh. to get it in literally every day into our diet in sufficient amounts. And as we get older, the body can't process B12 as well as it did when we were younger. So we need even more mm -hmm of it so uh, shellfish is a great way of getting b12 if you don't eat fish then my recommendation would be definitely make sure you supplement with b12 this is this is like the happy vitamin as well isn't it i mean you know b12 the, yeah. the, the mood stabilizer I, I swear by it i absolutely swear by it and if you can't get enough from your diet we always say diet first then supplementation is obviously the option and then we, we do supplements here of b12 uh, but yeah i mean you look at yeah. most things around mental health depression mm -hmm. anxiety you know, if somebody's had a tragedy in their life, then mm -hmm. that's a whole different thing. But, you know, we talk a lot, and Dan's a much better place to talk about it than I am being a GP, but if a lot of people are depressed and have anxiety and they don't know why, mm -hmm. quite often it can be just as simple as a deficiency in vitamins. Uh -huh. And normally it will be those water-soluble vitamins, the C's and the B's, because the body just doesn't retain it. So something, and B12 in particular, is associated with, with good mood, mm -hmm. a reduction in anxiety. So B12, prawns, 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 where you can get That's the it. other shellfish, just fabulous. Yeah. It's honestly done, it's, that is smelling amazing. So can you How just long have we us? got, by the way, Poppy? How long just, have we got? Uh, are you finished? Cause, uh, no, no, we just, just don't want to end up not being able to dish it up. So You'll have no ingredients left if Steve keeps going all the way he's going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you've got, you've got 10 minutes left, Dan. Cool. 10 minutes, so plenty of time. Perfect. Yeah. So plenty of time to do that. I might just pick a little bit more of You have to. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, really, we're just kind of coming to the... Uh, 
This is the easy bit really, just standing here having a chat while it is simmering down. Normally time to pop out a glass of wine. Normally, we would, but, but uh, not, not right now. Because it's no. the middle of the day. You don't endorse, <laughs> <laughs> can't endorse drinking on air because people always take that the wrong way, but we uh. cook a lot together. We, we went on a little skiing holiday together recently when my doctor actually was kind of partly responsible for me fracturing my arm, but let's get off that subject. No <laughs> hard feelings. Um, <laughs> But yeah, the odd glass of wine oh. when you're cooking, relaxing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just the odd glass of wine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's about spending it with, you know, these time with friends, you know, social health. If you sit and cook dinner together, or sorry, no, you don't sit and cook dinner. If you cook dinner together, then you sit together and eat <laughs> it. You know, if you want to have a, a glass of wine, then that's great. It's, as long as you're surrounded by people that, you know, you love and care about. And it's, it's all about, you know, it's about having a good time as well. And this is why we say, you know, yeah, okay, if you want to, you yeah. want to have a bit of a drink, but enjoy it with your friends and family, eating yeah. good food, brilliant. Yeah, yeah and yeah. I want to dispel that myth about good food being expensive, because mm -hmm. we do promote buying organic. Yeah, we do promote more fresh food and more whole foods, which can be a bit more expensive. But actually, it's actually a myth that it's more expensive, mm -hmm. because if you're eating lots of carbs, you have that cereal in the morning, and then within an hour or two, you have that crash, because the insulin grabs the sugar, stores it in the fats, mm -hmm. and now you have a snack. Mm -hmm. Snacks are always expensive. Snacks are normally full of carbs. So then by lunchtime, you're hungry again. You're on this carbo coaster ride. So you're eating lots and lots more junk food mm -hmm. and, and you're literally not giving the body a chance to react. But actually, your cost of spend across your food and your snacks mm -hmm. is way more than just having the occasional really good meal. Uh, you know, we find we just don't eat as many meals. Mm. We certainly don't snack when huh. you're eating good nutrition. Quite right, yeah, it's, it's, it's energy that's sustainable, you know, slow releasing, keeps yep. you going, you're not having a massive high and then a big crash. This yep. food that you can enjoy, you can love, it's tasty, it's healthy, and you can have it with the family. And any time of the day, so this whole thing that breakfast should be shaped around cereals and things like that is a nonsense. So mm -hmm. if we didn't eat all this right now, we could mm -hmm. put some on one side, reheat it in the morning, mm -hmm. and we're starting the day again without carbohydrates. So, yeah, this is yeah. an, it doesn't matter what time of the day dishes like it's this. It's not even bad cold, this, actually. Yeah. Or cold. I, have, I yeah, actually, yeah. why not? Yeah. I, I often make this particular dish up in quite large portions and just meal prep it, but yeah. I'm, uh, I, uh, I don't mind. This is perfectly fine for me to eat cold. I mean, yeah. some people would look, you know, insist on warming it up, but uh, no, yeah. yeah, it tastes great. Can I just ask what you, I saw you were adding some more spice there. What, what, what have you just done there? That's, that's pepper. We've got pepper, yeah, okay. That's just just pepper. Home. Okay. But, <laughs> very important, Salt. Salt's okay. great in order doctor, to... Doctor, doctor, I hear salt's not good yeah. for you. Doctor, I thought we couldn't so... have salt. <laughs> Come on, doctor, doctor, no, for so... 20 years I avoided salt because my doctor told me to cut back. What's going on? So, we've often said that it also, what it came from is when we started to salt restrict people who had severe hypertension, high blood pressure, mm -hmm. which, um, which was not responding to other treatments. We found that if we salt restrict them, then it, it works, it, it helps reduce their blood pressure. And true enough, it does. But then there's this big leap of logic to say that um, it's therefore high salt consumption that causes high blood pressure, which if you think about it, it sounds nice and seductive and nice and easy to think about, but it doesn't really follow any logical conclusion. Um, and actually we've been told that we need to salt restrict. But unless you've got really poor kidney function. We should know about should, anyway. We should, mm. we hopefully you'll know about, um, especially if you've had recent blood tests. Um, then you, should, you shouldn't have any problem processing, you know, probably even the entire amount. If you, you know, 50 grams of salt, you could theoretically yeah, not excrete in a day. No, you would. But salt, yeah. it, it, you know, it, it's naturally, you don't eat too much of it naturally. Unlike yeah. sugar. Can I going to turn this down for you? Because what we're talking yeah, yeah, yeah. about. Well, yeah. I don't want to burn I was going to say, I've really yeah. yeah. eat this afterwards. So I, <laughs> well, I read a book called The Great Salt Fix. Uh -huh. And what they were saying is, yes, too much salt, and especially if you're eating loads of carbs, you're going to get too much salt, probably. Mm. Too much salt might put your blood pressure up slightly. Okay. But actually, too deficient in salt, yeah. the opposite way around, puts your heart rate mm. up. And if we're talking about longevity of life and looking after the heart and blood mm -hmm. pressure, mm. actually having too high a heart rate is probably more dangerous than too high uh, uh, a blood pressure. So yeah, exactly. if we're eating good, wholesome foods, we probably want to add some salt to our diet. Yeah. yeah. And it just Makes tastes sense. better. I mean, and I spent years just, avoiding it because I was told to, and yeah, I love I know. salt. Yeah. Lots, and lots of people would, off the back of information, perhaps, you know, like, like we say here, we're trying to dispel many myths, but misinf well, not a bit, a lot of misinformation out there. 
So, uh, right. Right, well, so we're coming to the very end mm. of it, and I've just put a bit of coriander through it mm -hmm. in order to, um, to just uh, add a little bit of more flavour. So, and some more goodness. So much colour in there. This yeah. is the thing, you know, people think, oh, it's really bland. If anything, you're more likely to get unhealthy food being bland and beige yeah. and boring. So this is Dr. Dan's chorizo cauliflower uh, paella, food. but we hadn't got, well, I forgot to bring in the chorizo. So instead we changed the chorizo for the kit for the prawns. And uh, we've still got a really, really and that healthy dish. And that's the whole point about cooking primarily. Get the Primal Gourmet book. Mm -hmm. You can follow the recipes exactly as they are, and you'll have a great time. You'll live nutritionally and well. Um, but also, you can then experiment, because we tell you all the ingredients that can go into healthy food. This actual recipe isn't in the book, but every ingredient mm -hmm. is in the book, telling you that they're all great ingredients. Right. We've been on this for about 25 minutes. It probably would have been done in. 15 or 20 if we hadn't been, been away. talking so much. <laughs> um, and, and there we have it. Bit of lime juice just to finish off. Fabulous. Can I do, I do this like the tequila and, and suck yeah. it? Yeah, I've already put some on, but you can do that if you really want to, yeah. No tequila. I don't endorse <laughs> tequila. <by laughs> uh, just not. also to reference how quickly this was made with really the uh, Slender Brenda Clark Pro, um, which is with the food processor. So if you oh. want something that's quick and healthy, then Brilliant. get your hands on the Slender Brenda Slender Blender Pro. Mm. It's a mouthful to say. Um, and get yourself the, um, the, the you free recipe book as well. Oh, I, I, I will. Yeah, that's fine. Can we swap over though in a second? Can yeah. you talk whilst well, I eat? Okay, well, as long as, as, long oh, as this, is, this goes, this is a two-way street, it's fine. <laughs> but just look at the oh, colours in there. Dan. Absolutely amazing. That is great meal me. for a dinner party. Mm. Great meal for the family as well. You know, getting mm. your, your children, your kids involved with tasty food. We, you know, we we understand that it's not easy to get children to eat healthy, but it but it can be much easier. Can we say that. It can be made easier by making food that is tasty, and that is the whole point. We mm. are showing you how to make good food that tastes great. Not just so good, the, great. So the only two things that you might be stopping you from cooking this at the moment is if you haven't got a great blender. Let me quickly introduce you mm. to the Slender Blender that we used. This is an all-in-one mm. set for smaller kitchens or people that are looking for great value. You have, as you saw, the big, uh, where's it gone now? It's, uh, oh, it's in the sink already. Uh, the big blending uh, dish. And you saw the way that Dr. Dan did that by putting that on top. But also you then turn it upside down and use it for your smoothies. Whoop, pop it on the floor, uh, like so. so. Two in one, you can then take that to work with the lid on it. You've got your health drink for the day. Amazing, amazing deal. One of our most top selling products at Primal Cure. And then the only other thing you might want to look at to look at what should go into nutritional food would be the Primal Gourmet book, which breaks down at the beginning things, ingredients to include, those to include in moderation, and those to avoid if you're trying to lose weight, trying to avoid diabetes, cancer, etc. etc. And in the back of the book, we actually do a whole index around certain illnesses and certain recipes to avoid or help avoid those illnesses. Your food is amazing. It is. It is absolutely amazing. Thank wow. you to, to have a doctor in the kitchen. Like you know, like I said at the beginning of the show, you know, we're so used to perhaps seeing our doctors behind a desk and us going in and you know asking for, for help. And yes, you know, you talk to us about nutrition, but to actually see you in the kitchen showing us what you do at home is is such a great insight you know really really is well so you said that you'd use this you know just in the week you'd be also using week, food yeah. prep yeah yeah i also i often this is a big because you know it does take time and it is easier to go and grab a pizza but we don't want to be doing that Absolutely. so um so yeah i i just usually i'll cook up a double portion of this and just have it the next day yeah Fantastic. for breakfast yeah. With the, yeah come on we need a name for it we're going to always end up our programs from now on if we're not taking them out of the book, we need a name for this dish. So people say, I've just got... Dr. Dan's... Carb dodging... That's a bit no of a mouthful. No chorizo paella. <laughs> <laughs> the non-chorizo Dr. Dan... Come on, come on, I no, need a no. name. <laughs> Inspiration Dr. Dan, give me... Carb dodging paella. It's got to be. Yeah, OK, fair there enough. There we go. <laughs> Carb dodging paella, because he is Dr. Dan the Carge Dodger. What are we going to cook up next time? Right, well, we've got your, so your next we're gonna do. We're going to do real simple, classic British slash Italian. This is very much Italian. <laughs> uh, bolognese. Okay. Um, so, but we're going to do it with spiralised courgettes. Okay, so the next recipe, they might not be played out in order on the internet. They might not be played out in order. Uh, but somewhere you will find our what's already going to mix it. The 
We're doing um, um, <laughs> courgette bolognese. Courgette bolognese, somewhere on the global web.